we want, we hope to uh, make the Norwegian public more aware of the very interesting, vibrant and dynamic political debate that is going on on the African continent. And, and we see ourselves mainly as facilitators in that debate. And that is why we have been working for months now to get this very wonderful panel together. And we're all looking very much forward to their points of view. So I will start by giving the word to Mr. Zvu Sigola, please. Miss Master of the Ceremony, Dr. Jotlan, Team, Pit House, the South African Embassy, Norwegian Council for Africa. Thank you for inviting us to speak for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades who are here, I come from the Shack Dwellers Movement. It's called Abasha Basem John Doro, residents of the Shacks. We were formed in 2005 to fight, protect, promote, and advance the interests and the dignity of the Shack Dwellers. In South Africa, generally, if you are poor, particularly if you are living in shanty towns, in slums, you are taken as a person who cannot think for yourself. You are taken as a person whose brain is not functioning properly, such that someone else from somewhere else has to be hired and be paid to think for you, to represent you, and to take decisions on your behalf. This has been the experience of the Shack Brewers. We want to acknowledge the sacrifice that were made by a number of comrades in the early days um, during the apartheid who have put their heads on the block for the South Africans to be liberated in 1994. Um, but of course, I have to speak for the organization that I come from. Abakhan is not is not the NGO, it's not the faith-based organization. We are not the trade union. We are not the NPO non-profit organization. But we are a political social movement. But again, we are not a political party. So we are not contesting, competing for any um, government uh, position. Um, when we were formed, uh, it was out of anger, hunger and frustration that we had to jump in the streets again to demand what we have been promised. Many promises have been made, many promises have been broken uh, in 1994. Many of us, I, I feel very embarrassed uh, today uh, to say that the avenues of democracy in South Africa has been shut such that we are unable to speak to our leaders. Um, the state has suddenly become violent on us, they've become very harsh, such that they attack us, they arrest us, they even kill us. I feel embarrassed again to say in the so-called New South Africa, we, are, we find ourselves becoming refugees in our own country, in our own provinces, in our own city, in our own communities, and in our own families. As I speak to you, many of us are made homeless by the government of the day, who was once the hope and the light for many South Africans. I feel embarrassed that I cannot engage with my own government, with my own political leadership, because our crime has been to organize the unorganized, mobilize the unmobilized, but most of all, to demand our dignity. Our crime has been to demand dignity, not even gold, silver, or platinum, for that matter. Not even service delivery, for that matter. We've been attacked for speaking truth to power, for organizing outside the state control. As we speak, I have a mandate from um, Abakhlan, to say that the people of Norway have played a major role in bringing what was to be the real South Africa, where real freedom, peace and stability could be the talk of the day. That today, 
many of us live in those substandard conditions. Under a black-led majority government, we still don't have land in our own country. The conditions in the shack settlements, in the informal settlements, in the slums, in shanty towns, are not suitable for any human habitation. In shanty town, there's hardly any water, hardly any electricity, hardly any road access, hardly any refuse connection. There's hardly any electricity. As a result, people have to use candles, paraffin stoves, which are often explosive, and people are killed in those shanty towns. We are refused our basic human rights services because our crime has been to go to cities. Now, the right to cities, again in South Africa, has become a center of that has been contested. So the situation as we speak um, is that um, the government of the day, particularly in the province of Kwasanatan where I come from, has become the rule. The rule of the day is warlordism, assassination of political leadership, and the emerging voice of those who were unable to, to speak for themselves have been shot. You may have seen the Dear Mandela just now. It's not a fantasy, it's the real life, the day-to-day -day life that we have to live in each second, in each minute in our life. So the ruling African National Congress for us has become something else that we cannot believe and that we cannot accept. It has become a monster. It has turned against its own people. The recent Marikana massacre is one of the good examples of the state having to attack its own people. The recent attack on our own movement that led to two people being killed in 2009 is one of the good examples of the, of the state sponsored attack on its own people. It is a disgrace and it is crime against humanity. The system of the past that has oppressed many South Africans, we see our own comrades becoming better oppressors than our former oppressors. What we see, of course, has been the change of faces the color from white minority to black majority. But the behavior is the same. So we feel oppressed in our own country and we still make that call to international communities who are actually concerned about the human life. So as the movement, all we want to see, it's neither gold, silver or platinum but we want our citizenship back, we want our humanity back. We want to be treated with respect and dignity, regardless of our age, color, gender, creed, borders. We want to be treated as human beings. This is the message we sent with the South African Embassy, with Dr. Jordan today, that all we want is not the multi-million rent. We want respect and dignity. Thank you so much.